I understand that our next speaker is all set and ready to share that with us today, developing a global speaking model. Now, he's a global speaking fellow, certified virtual presenter, former president of the National Speakers Association and NSA, speaks live or virtually over 60 times a year on employee innovations and engagement, customer experience, how to create happier, healthier workplace. Given his 25 plus years of speaking experience in Asia, he offers each client a global and culturally sensitive perspective. Uh, various global experiences have brought him success in industries including meetings, real estate, hospitality, financial services, education, and government. And now he is here to help us assess the culture of the organization, industry, and region in creating a customized program relevant to the needs of each client. Now, if you are ready, let's put our hands together and welcome Scott Friedman. Yeah, over to you, Scott. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. I was just I was kind of a little worried that only one guy was going to clap. <laughs> That's happy, but hey, good, everybody clap. All right, I'm just checking. I mean, there's a lot to be happy about today, right? I mean, how nice to be back at the uh, convention, the maps. Wow. I don't know how many I've been to, but a lot over the years. Yeah. And uh, you know, Raymond's laughing because I think our, we were talking earlier about Shah Alam when I met Bhavani like 12 years ago with Jonathan. And anyway, it's great to be back. Great to be happy again. Uh, and really that's the, oh, is that the one? Not this one? Okay. I was going to be just pushing and pushing and not working. Um, and that, the, I really want to talk about how do you create not just happiness in your global speaking life, but it's all driven by, and I think uh, Serene was such a great lead up to this because it really talks about, you know, it's how you show up in your life and, and what you want your life to look at, look like. Um, that's that's where we're gonna come from. I'm gonna stay out of this uh, light, I guess, huh? Okay, good. Uh, all right, so five, keys in building a global speaking model. All right? So tip number one. Is this gonna, yes. Do what brings you joy. Figuring out what it is that you really love. I was on a plane from Denver to Nashville about maybe 10 years ago. I was sitting next to a guy, we struck up a conversation. I said, hey, what do you do? He says, I'm a, I'm a musician. I go, really? I said, uh, you just write anything, sing anything that I would know. He said, yeah, he said, I wrote two songs, that, and the rest was history. I go, really? He says, Born to be Wild and wow. A Magic Carpet Ride. Can you tell me who it is? First person gets a, gets a little prize. Even Gianna, my Nashville buddy, doesn't uh, live there. No? Steppenwolf. Yeah, Steppenwolf. Hey, you know the song, right? Born to be wild. So, so we started a conversation, and he says, uh, and I said, uh, we'll just start talking about life. And he said, he prices the band service. He, he was John K. was the, the band's name, and it said it was called John K. Steppenwolf. And he said, uh, I price the band services around the, the joy and the hassle factor. I said, hey, tell me more about that. He said, I'm going to have trouble with this too, but Oh, there we go. He said, uh, in, the, in this winter time, I like to be out of Nashville. It doesn't matter. Kids are back in school, so the price of the band goes down. He said, in the summertime, I have a nice ranch. Kids are out of school. He said, I really want to spend more time in Nashville, so the price of the band goes up. And it got me thinking, the joy and the hassle factor. I mean, don't we all want more joy in our lives and less hassle? So I think our, if we look at our global speaking model, it starts with bringing joy into our life. How can we have more joy and less hassle? See, I believe our careers are simply tools to create the lifestyle we want to lead, a chance to hang out with the people we love, and an opportunity to make a difference in whatever unique way we want to make a difference in the world. Right? So for me, what is my perfect world? 
I want to spend 125 days a year in Southeast Asia. Uh, I, I love the I love the people in the countries that I that I visit over here between Malaysia, the Philippines, Thailand, Cambodia, Singapore. I want to I want to be over here. Uh, Jana Stanfield, Jana, can you just stand up for just a quick second? Jana and I in 2008 founded what's called Together We Can Change the World. So the, the difference you want to make in the world, I wanted to give something back into the countries that I really love. So uh, in 2008, we did a speakers tour. And we took six speakers from Bangkok, then to Kuala Lumpur, and ended up in Singapore, and had the time of our lives. And we said, you know what, we want, we want more of this. And now JLo has been, how many tours now, JLo? Six, maybe? Probably eight. See, I missed two of his tours. <laughs> Sound asleep during those two tours. Uh, yeah, and so, and then, Welcome to our latest member on our board of directors, Jonathan Lau. Thank you, Jonathan. So, so, I, so I know what my perfect world looks like. So my career is built around that perfect world. So three questions for you. What are you doing that you love doing? And this is going to be personally, but for the sake of this talk today, let's make it a little bit more career-oriented. What are you doing that you love doing in your career? What do you love doing that you're not doing? And what are you doing that you hate doing <laughs> that you'd rather not be doing? Right? So that's that's what our career should should be around. Is, and I'm I, I'm a keynote speaker more than I am a trainer. I do a little bit of training in this part of the world, but really more of a keynote speaker. So this is in creating a keynote model or creating a global speakers model. It can be made up of if you want to do speaking or training or, you know, the greatest thing about the speaking industry today, and one thing that COVID did for us, it opened up new markets. It, if, if all you want to do is present virtually now, I mean, it, it's working today, right? And, and I love what Christian did. You know, he said, hey, you need to see my body language. I want to go half and half with the screen. So Zoom allows you to do that now. So it really is pretty clear what you can get even at a conference if you want to come in virtually. And you can have a different price for that. And if you want to do, you want to have online courses, you want a lot more free time, then you put a lot of time and resources into those online resources, right? right? So it's just determining what your perfect world, what really excites you. Do you love being in front of a live audience like today? Or would you just assume, stay at home, you're an introvert, when you come into the room, you bring apprehension? Oh, no, happiness. You bring happiness. That's right. <laughs> Not happiness. I'm sorry. So it, it just depends on, on, what you, on what you really want to do. All right? So second is, oops, sorry. Second is, can you go back one space for me? Thank you. Second is to get good. I, I wasn't, oh, go for one. Oh, no. Okay, great. Thank you. I joke when people say, hey, well, how, you know, over the years, how's your speaking career? And I said, I said, you know, the, the marketing is doing great for me, but the word of mouth is killing me. <laughs> and they look at me like, oh, really? And they're trying to figure it out. Because <laughs> it's kind of a joke, but, you know. So you, you want your best marketing to be a good, great speech. You don't want your word of mouth to be killing you. You want you want the word of mouth to be really good. So that the first thing before you do anything is, do you have a message that's relevant to whatever audience you want to speak to? There's nothing better than getting good. You need to get good. All right, and how do you get good? As Darren LaCroix would say, stage time. Dale Carnegie says the difference between a good speaker and a great speaker is 1,000 speeches. You know. It's just to get as many reps as you possibly can, to get really comfortable in front of an audience. Uh, is that there's no better way than just to get good. As a speaker, we come from one of three places. We're either self-centered, content-centered, or audience speaker, or audience-centered, or a combination of those three things. When we're self-centered, it's like, how am I doing? Do they like me? Am I going to get a standing ovation? Am I? So it's, it's, we're all in our head worried about our own ego. 
I think as speakers, we, there is some ego involved, right? But we, we need to get out of our own heads and move to the next two, preferably the third one. But content centered is, okay, I have 300,042 ways that you can use social media in your talk. And I'm not done until I get to all 300,700. I don't care who my audience is. I got some content to deliver, and I'm going to get to all that content today. I could be speaking to cardboard boxes, but I'm going to get those points across. <laughs> That's you? <laughs> the cardboard box or the you don't care? Content center. And then the, uh, and then the third is audience center. So when we're audience-centered, we're not there to control our audience. We're there to ask what we have in common. You're really creating an experience with that unique group of people, where they are at on that particular day. A speaking coach many years ago, Lou Heckler, told me, he says, when, whenever you give a keynote speech, if you have a one-hour keynote speech, he said, plan for about 45 to 50 minutes. Because you never know what's going to come up in the audience. How you're going to have to facilitate a conversation. Or you'll be on stage and you're like this, right? And all of a sudden something will come into your mind that you totally forgot to put in the program. And it just makes sense at that time. And you don't want to have that conversation. Oh, man, I don't have time for that now. And you're trying to think and you're trying to speak. And you're trying, do I have time? Do I not have time? So if you build a little extra time, if you're audience-centered, you're really there for your audience. And you may have to change some material, right? but, but that's, the, that's the question. What do I have in common with this group? How can I create that connection? And, and I do a few different things to be able to, to force that connection in a sense. Um, I was talking to Steve, actually, I, I was gonna, uh, I, I'd like not to give my slides until the very last second because I'm, I'm usually doing changes up until that moment. Because of one, one exercise I do in my talk, where it's Siri, I'm having a conversation, I say to Siri, I go, hey Siri, you know, what could possibly cause this group of illustrious trainers and speakers stress? And then Siri would rattle off a list of things based on what really does cause us stress, as well as everything that's happened in the meeting with a little bit of a humorous twist. So the last time I spoke in Malaysia was to an insurance company a couple months ago. And I did that, it was the afternoon speaker, so I sat through the morning session. And, uh, and everything that they said that was kind of funny, today would have been good because there's a lot of funny stuff actually that I could. Uh, so, and, so here's what, what that sounds like. Let's see if that works. Siri, what causes this group of insurance professional stress? Is this a sound file or no? Maybe not. All right, there were a lot of funny, a lot of things. <laughs> oh, no, we're back. Can you turn it? Yeah, let's, uh, let's try again. That works. No? But, yeah, maybe if I put the microphone here or something, I can do it real quick. So is it, oh, is it even on? Is it? You don't have to be Wi-Fi, it's just on a slide. All right, anyway, let's, let's not walk loud. Okay, it was really good. <laughs> you guys would have just loved it, I know. It. So, so, the, so the point being is, if you set yourself up with, with ways that you can tie in with the audience, then, then, that's a, then it immediately creates that connection, but it's, but it's really staged ahead of time. But then you can add to it as you go along. Does that make sense? Uh, trainers are obsolete. Facilitators of learning rule the world. I like to say that there's a lot more wisdom in front of me than there is in front of you. So how can we collectively take the wisdom in the room, uh, especially as a, more of a, as a trainer, right? Because you have a full day training program or two days, you can tap into that learning in the room. So what's the best way to do it? Trainers are obsolete. Facilitators of learning rule the world. What's the old saying? Uh, I'd rather, I don't want to be a sage on the stage. I'd rather would be a guide on the side. Okay. So the three keys, I think, of being a great keynote speaker, 
a great trainer, even a great leader. Authenticity, vulnerability, and humility. I think we've seen a great example of authenticity on the stage today, so far. I mean, Wendy, you really felt who Wendy was, right? Yeah, I mean, they were very authentic in her presentation. Shereen, same thing. I mean, you really, she speaks about authenticity, so hopefully. Because <laughs> I've never seen anybody fake authenticity like Shereen. Is. <laughs> Unbelievable. Um, yeah, so that, that you have to feel comfortable with your own message. You know, I've seen speakers try to take a, a story or a joke and, and tell it when it's really not their style. And it just doesn't fit. We've all seen that before, right? So it's got to fit. You've got, you've got to feel comfortable. It's, your, your, your topic has to, has to fit. Your, your style has to fit. You are your own best style. Vulnerability. Uh, I thought that Serene was very, was very vulnerable in her talk today. You know, just, I mean, you, you really got a sense of who she was and, and uh, you know, and, and, and her journey along the way. As speakers, that's what we want to do. We want to share our vulnerability with our audience. And there's a fine line between doing therapy on stage <laughs> and being vulnerable. And usually the, the way that you tell for yourself, am I doing therapy? <laughs> Is, are you healed? <laughs> I mean, if you're still going through something painful in your life, and then all of a sudden you get up and you start talking about the next thing you know, you're in tears. I mean, it's very, it's very authentic. But the vulnerability, and it's very vulnerable, but it's not necessarily at that point comfortable for your audience. So you've got to be careful about being vulnerable. But but it's they want us. They want to know where you come from. They want to know your story. They, you know, why why are you the one that's that's giving this keynote speech? And then humility. And humility is um. It's really key to be able to. Uh, I think the the speakers I see there that use self-effacing humor. They bring the humor back on themselves are the most effective. One of the things I notice more in Asia than I do in the US is the speakers here have to prove that, that they've conquered great things, that, that they, they've done something pretty important. And so the first time they tell a story, you know, well, that's kind of nice that they conquered big things. And then they tell another story where they were the hero, and another story, and after a while, you're like, okay. I can't relate to you anymore. You know, I, want, I want to be able to see myself in you. So authenticity, vulnerability, and humility come from a place, share your foibles, share your failures. You know, how, did you, how did you come to know what you really know today is a, is a better approach. Next, number three, is become a good storyteller. So back to us, you're looking at that like, what's going on there? <laughs> I, was like, I saw that on a dating site and I, and I wrote the lady and I go, I'm not ask, calling to ask her on a date, I'm just calling to say, can I use that photo? <laughs> I love that photo. <laughs> uh, so in, uh, in being a good storyteller, something we just talked about, don't always be the hero. Tell the stories of, of when you learn from your failures. That will be the most vulnerable. That will be the most authentic. If, if, and of course, if they're universal stories. So when you're, the, the reason we want to be a good storyteller, especially when we have a diverse audience, a global audience, because storytelling transcends cultures. Right? It's the quickest way, if we share universal truth through story, that we truly can relate to everybody in the audience because we all go through similar things, even if we come from different backgrounds. Oh, yeah. It looks like. It is. I asked him if I could use them. What do you think? Nice, yeah. The, the power stage. Another Saturday night. Yeah. yeah. So when you're storytelling, in your stories, people should hear their own life and so that they can relate to it. You want to take yourself off of the podium and put yourself on the same level as, as, as the audience. 
Don't just tell the story, be the story. So go into character. If you're telling a story and you're, you're talking about your mom, go into your mom's character. I love what Mark Sharon brought up, a speaker from the US said. He said, the difference between, uh, difference between telling your own story and being your own story is like the difference between on Halloween putting on makeup or wearing a mask. If you're wearing on a mask, you're kind of telling the story. But if you're putting on makeup, you become the character. So you want to become the characters of your own stories. Now go into go with your brother, now make them see your brother or your mother or your sister, whatever, whatever, whatever characters you are. And then the simple, if you just turn your body a quarter turn, and then when you're answering the same thing on the other side. Then it's like you're talking to the other character just by simply repositioning your body. <laughs> Quite a challenge, huh? <laughs> this is a, how many of you are in a mastermind group? Okay, so I think that's one of the, the, the great beauties of NSA or any Global Speakers Federation Association maps is is to, is to get together and, and talk to one another about the business. And one of the things that we do is we tell stories in our mastermind group. And we play this game called Half the Words. So normally when we write a story, we write, we write the story and we tell all the details. And it's usually maybe two or three times too long. So I challenge you to write out your stories. And then if it doesn't help develop the theme, really help to develop the characters, or isn't it isn't a funny comedic aside? There's a good chance it doesn't need to be in the story. There's another technique where you actually start midway through the story, so you just leave out the first part because most of the time you don't even need it. All right, so play half the words in humor and in storytelling. Less is more. Jerry Seinfeld said he would spend hours, sometimes days, trying to figure out how to take a punchline from seven words to four words. Same thing with a story. How can we get to the, get to the punchline or get to the, the payoff of the story as fast as we can? Because as in humor and in storytelling, maybe I should just stand over here, huh? Would you give me a little push? Thank you. Human and serotonin, the punchline has to be bigger than the buildup. The pause. The pause. The pause allows your audience to, in the case of humor, to fill in their own punchline. If it's a thoughtful, you want them to think, it allows them that time they need to think. You should frame your message. By framing your message, you pause before your message, you deliver the message, the punchline. And then you pause again to let them take it in. I tell a story, I said, you know, if I wanted my dad to lose his sense of humor, all I would have to do is bring home my report card. Junior high school, worst report card ever. Dinner time, dad pulls out my report card. We send him through the mail. He says, Scott, what is this? I said, dad, it's one person's opinion. <laughs> Do we need to talk about it? Yes, I think we need to talk about it. How come Andy doesn't get C's and D's on his report card? Andy was one of my best friends growing up. I could never quite compare to Andy. I said, Dad, you can't compare me to Andy. We are so much different. Oh, are you? How are you so much different? I said, Dad, Andy has very bright parents. <laughs> So the, the very bright parents. So I, you see how I just kind of, if I said, well, Dad, Andy has very bright parents. You know, when I get to very bright, you're thinking, very bright, what the, where are we going? And you're kind of, you know, you're filling in the blanks in your own mind. You want the audience to be able to fill in those blanks. And sometimes they're right, and then they're like, yeah, I'm smart. I'm one of the best audience members here, yeah. Right, so give them a chance. And then, of course, again, if it's thoughtful, give them a chance as well. What if? So in, in storytelling, you know, amazing when I, it's always funny when I tell like a very personal story and somebody comes up and they go, did that really happen to you? 
I'm like, no, I just made it up, you know, just for just for a dramatic appeal to just yank on the heartstrings of the audience. I do it all the time. No, of course it's real. But the, the rule is in in I think the Global Speakers Federation and in all storytelling is it has to it has to be legitimate story. It, it had that. It had to really happen. The integrity of the story has to stay intact. You don't just make stuff up. But you can you can exaggerate a little bit. I, I tell a story of in my when I talk about humor and play, and I, I say, you know, I, my mom and I have this ritual. Every April Fool's Day, I play a trick on my mom. A couple years ago, it was the best year ever. She's been six months a year in Colorado. Now that she's retired, she's been six months a year in Arizona. Arizona so in Arizona, when when uh, April Fool's Day comes around, she's in Arizona, so I, I leave this message on her machine at her house in Colorado. Thanks for calling the Schmittenbergs. Bruce is playing golf, Doris is doing the yoga thing, and the kids are in trouble somewhere. If you call to talk to the shares, my mom's very name. They're in Arizona and can be reached at 602-585-9303. Then I had a friend in Denver calling Arizona, Lita May, they call her Lita May because that's her name. Lita May, is there somebody living in your house in Denver? She says, what? So she calls, she gets that message, she thinks I've leased out of her house. <laughs> and you know how you're, when your mom is mad at you, you know when you're right. <laughs> Scott? <laughs> who are the Schmidbergs? Mom, I go, don't you lie to me, honey! Oh, Mom, the Schmidbergs, they are the nicest people. They just moved from Kentucky. Their house wasn't ready yet. I thought, what would it hurt if they just lived in your house until their house was ready? What would it hurt? <laughs> Do you have people that in your life that make things up on the spot just to survive? <laughs> Do you know that 64.7% of, of all statistics are made up on the spot? <laughs> My mom used to do that. Same thing. She would just make stuff up. The, the neighbors are complaining about the Schmidberg. Their dog barks late at night. Not some of the trash in the neighborhood. Mom, they don't have a dog. do do Like, oh, Mom, I didn't know they had a dog. <laughs> Should have never signed a contract. What? <laughs> Slams down the phone. I'm thinking, got her. This, I really got her this year. That was what. And then I picked up the phone to call her back. I think, ah, I'm going to let her sweat for a little while. <laughs> I forgot to call her back. <laughs> Four hours later, my sister calls me. She says, Scott, I'm calling to give you mom's flight information. She's coming to get rid of the shit. <laughs> so there's some good news and some bad news about how the story ends. The bad news. $386 later on a quick ticket. Who do you think's paying for the ticket? <laughs> and the good news is really good news. The Schmittenbergs left the place so clean. <laughs> you would have never even knew they were there. Okay, so did it happen? Pretty much exactly like I told it until my sister called me. Four hours later, she did call me. But it goes, it goes on in you know, she says, well, I'm calling to give you mom's flight information. I go, Wendy, come on. You know that it's April Fool's Day, and you would never let mom buy tickets. Oh, no, no, she's coming. So I called my mom in Arizona. And my mom, she's looking one of those worried. If I ever say on my machine, hey, this is Scott. I'm in Dallas today. <gasps> don't you ever say that on the, you know, don't, they'll, they'll come in, they'll break into your home, they'll set it on fire, they'll take all your belongings. Don't you do that. So I called her. This message was on her machine. Thanks for calling the shares. Uh, David and Lita May are on their way to Denver. They can be reached in Denver. I'm like, Mom, you told me never to say that. I know that it didn't really happen. Come on. Happy April Fool's Day. All right. Two minutes, right? An extra two minutes of the story. And your response is, eh. right? Less is more. So I had, to, I had to make up the ending of the story. Did the story happen? The story really happened. But do you see that just a little what if? And in your mastermind groups, and they say, I got this great story, but I don't know how to tell it. You know, so, so use that. Take that advantage. All right, so I'm, uh, I'm now moving on to number four. Be strategic. Whenever you go give a speech internationally, look what else you can do while you're there. Here's just some ideas. Focus on your expertise. I write books because it gives me credibility for the markets I want to speak in so that I can bring joy, more joy into my life. Uh, call speakers bureaus when you're in town. You can set up other events with chamber of conferences, HR conference, online summits, create your own conferences, hotel trade, 
LinkedIn, I think, is the best of social media. Whenever I go to a new country or I just, I'll start going through LinkedIn, sending out notes, sending out free books, just ways to get more business, right? So what else can we do while we are in that country with that speech? Okay, help me here. Thank you. Then um, collaborate. Collaborate. You know, we are in the greatest business in the world. I believe that the, the truth, quality of life is determined by the quality of our relationships. And I have, I, I look out among you and I, I see so many old friends from, from years ago. Uh, Jonathan and I have become best buddies over the years and it's always, treat to have them on our, on our tours, and we're doing another Together We Can Change the World tour here next month, so hopefully we'll involve MAPS, and if you want to get involved and learn more about it, Jonathan would be the right person to talk to. But it's, uh, as Johan talked about, about uh, the abundance mentality. If we give away all of our trade secrets, then the speaking business becomes better, and all of the boats, the tide rises, so that everybody, and that abundance, there's, there's so much for everybody. Okay? So I'm going to end today with my, uh, my, my partner in Together We Can Change the World. Not, not partner like that. <laughs> yeah, we would, no, we would thank, never. You, thank you. Thank you for clarifying. Yeah, yeah, it's clarifying. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> Once you were with the blue here, I said, I, I can't do this anymore. No. No. <laughs> All right, so uh, being in Malaysia, we want to sing our, our Malaysia version of, uh, of oh. Together We Can Change the World. Oh, our theme song? Yeah. Okay. Ready? Ready? Here we go. Malaysia, our theme song. Please join in if you know it. Rasa sayang, hey, rasa sayang, sayang, hey, 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 just the overall theme song. Oh! Okay, we'll pick together first. we can change the that, world. That theme song, yeah. Not just the theme song when we're in Malaysia. Right, 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 the other one. With <laughs> Chelo and Paul. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, right, okay, the other, yeah. Oh, the other one, okay. Yeah, go ahead. Together. Together. Everybody. Together. Together we can change the world. 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 As speakers, together, 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 together we can change the world. 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 Wonderful. Uh, once again, round of applause. Scott Fremantle.